Good day, class. Uh, it's Sir Capistran again, and welcome to another discussion for uh, Month 1 Statistics, uh, wherein we'll be talking or we'll be continuing our discussion regarding measures of central tendency. So actually, this is measure of central tendency part 2. So for today, uh, we will be actually continuing the, uh, on our discussion regarding other measures of central tendency wherein we will be talking about median and mode and other uh, considerations regarding our measures of central tendency. So in that, let's uh, dive into our discussion wherein let's first decide, uh, define uh, median. So median is actually the midpoint of a data array. So when we talk about a data array, a data array is actually ordered, uh, whether uh, ascending or des uh, descending, and it's called a data array. Meaning to say, if you have an interval or a ratio level of measurement uh, data, uh, you need to arrange them from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. And by median, we'll be getting the middle portion of it. Meaning to say, the middle of the data array itself. So, median is appropriate measure of central tendency for data that have ordinal or above level of measurement, but it is more valuable on in an ordinal type of data. By uh, ordinal type of data, this or some kaya siya nagiging ano, appropriate for those type of data. Kasi when we talk about median, hindi natin involve yung lahat ng observations natin uh, dun sa ating computation. So, wherein talagang pinukuha lang natin kung ano yung nasa gitna. That's why uh, it is, uh, median is more valuable in ordinal type of data wherein uh, there is no specific difference between your uh, data and your data set. So, in any case, uh, our examples actually have or will contain interval and ratio, de de ratio level of measurement, okay? So, for some properties of median, median is actually unique for a given data set, meaning there is only one median for a set of data. Hindi tayo pwede magkaroon ng dalawang median sa iisang, uh, sa iisang data set, okay? And also, the median is found by arranging the data set from, from lowest or highest or getting the value of the middle observation. Okay, and next, median is not affected by extreme or small large values because uh, we are just uh, considering those uh, or the data that is in the middle of, uh, uh, middle of your data array. Okay, and for the fourth uh, property, median can be computed for an open-ended frequency distribution. That is one of the difference between the median and the mean. Uh, for uh, in median, you can have uh, open-ended frequency distribution by open-ended, as you may have remembered on a past discussion. Those are the values that have uh, uh, less than something value or greater than some some value. So, in that, uh, kasi gitna lang yung titingnan natin, so hindi natin magiging concern yung less than na yun, kung ano ba yung uh, specific or exact value ng less than na yun, and yung specific value ng greater na yun, greater than na yun. Okay? So, for the fifth uh, property of median, the median can be applied for ordinal, interval, and ratio data. Also, Median is most appropriate in skewed data. By skewed data, uh, it means the data has a certain bias. But a certain bias, if you have this distribution, as you may have remembered, uh, a symmetrical data follows a certain curve wherein uh, uh, approximately most of the data lies in between, in the middle of the, the graph. But sinabi natin skewed, it's either ganito yung itsura niya, bias siya sa left side, or 
via sa runtime. So, yun yung sinasabi nating skewed data. Wherein, uh, hindi, hindi nasa gitna. Kung ito yung mean natin, say, ito yung mean natin for this uh, observation, makikita nyo, nasa left side yung karamihan, yung majority, skewed diyan. Pag nasa kanan yung majority, that is also skewed. Okay? So, that is all for the uh, the properties of median. So, going into the computation itself. So, just like mean, we have two ways on how we can compute for the median. So, in here, we have the median for a group and, and group data. And also, we will have a computation regarding median of group data. So, to determine the value of the median from ungrouped data, we need to consider two rules. Kapag, uh, by two rules, we will be using these rules kapag uh, depende kung ano yung number of uh, samples natin. So, if n or sample size is odd, the, me the median is the middle rank. It just means na po, ano yung nasa ba, pinakajit na. So, for example, you have uh, five samples. For that five samples, that is an odd number. Meaning to say, uh, if you have uh, one, two, third sample, fourth sample, fifth sample, you will be getting that value of the three, third value. So, uh, or third uh, measurement. Meaning to say, uh, yung katlong, value, katlong data dun sa data array mo, yun na yung, yung median. So, if the n is even, the median is the average of the two middle rank values. Meaning to say, uh, say we have 2, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, that, is, that has uh, an n which is equal to 6. So, nasa yung gitna niya. So, kung titignan natin kasi, kapag kinuha natin yung gitna ng 6, nandito yun. Okay? somewhere in between 4 and 5. So, ang gagawin natin, we just need to get the average of that 4 and 5. Meaning to say, we have 4 plus 5 divided by 2. That is 9 divided by 2. So, our median will be 4.5. So, ganun natin, i-apply yung median kapag naman even siya. Okay? Also, that, that is computed using this formula or for the rank value. That is not the uh, region itself, but uh, it tells you kung alin ba yung uh, value na kukunin mo. Okay? So, let's have some example. So, so, in here, you, we need to find the median of the age of nine middle management employees of a certain company. So, this is actually the same example that we use for the mean. So, in here, uh, the ages are 53, 45, 59, 48, 54, 46, 51, 58, 55. So, first things first. When we are computing for median, sabi natin, kailangan natin ng data array. Meaning to say, we need to arrange this data from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. So in here, I actually arrange the data in order to make the uh, data array. So we have here 45, 46, 48, 51, 53, 64, uh, 50, oh, balik tayo. 64. 63, 64. I think that should be 54. Anyway, so we have there 45, uh, 46, 48, 51, 53, 54, 55, 58, and 59. So that is our data array now. So what we can do here is we need to uh, select the middle rank value. And in that, we have that 9 as our n. So what we can do here is just... Uh, just substitute 9 to that uh, formula of the mean general rank value. So we have there 9 plus 1, which is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So in that, you just need to count the fifth 
what is the fifth value? So you have one, two, three, four, five. So that is your uh, median. So in that, identify the median in the data. So you have there your 53 because that is the fifth value. So therefore, uh, the median is 53 years old. So that is how you compute for the median of an group data. So same goes for uh, even even numbered uh, sample size. You just need to get the the average of the two middle rank values. Okay. So just like this. We have here uh, the daily rates of a sample of eight employees at GMS Incorporated are those values. So find the median uh, daily rate of employees. So step one, arrange. Okay. Step two, they, uh, identify the median rank. So median rank value will be eight plus one because our uh, sample size is eight. So we have there 9 divided by 2, so we will have 4.5. Then we just we just need to get the, that 4.5 value. So in that, we will be uh, looking, it, it, looking into that value. Kung ano yung value na yan. And to get that value, you just need to get the average of 550 and 560. So you have there 555 cents. The median range uh, is 53. Okay. Ang hirap paste eh. Sorry. Okay, so hence, the median rate, daily rate of employees is uh, 555 pesos. Okay? So that is how you compute for uh, the median of ungrouped data. So as you can see here, we have the, this, wherein we have an odd numbered sample size, and we have this uh, with our uh, even numbered sample size. So, uh, let's look into the median of the group or group data. So, in that, if you are using a frequency distribution table, uh, the median is actually uh, kind of hard to, uh, to identify because of the certain uh, steps that you need to follow in order to compute for that uh, data set or for the data. So as you can see here, we actually have uh, a different formula for the rank value, wherein the median rank value is actually n, or sample size, or population size divided by 2. So then we have here this formula, wherein median is equal to the lower boundary of the median class. Then after determining the lower boundary of the median class, you need to get the quotient of the uh, the half of the population size or sample size minus the less than CF or the cumulative frequency before the median class divided by the frequency and you need to multiply that with the interval. So, ayun. Medyo mahirap siya. Pero tingnan natin kung masasolve na dito. So, uh, we need to follow the following follow the following steps for finding a region of a group data. First, you need to determine the median class using the rank value formula wherein you just need to divide the, the population size or sample size by two. Then, you need to construct a cumulative frequency uh, column in the table. Kung meron ng cumulative frequency column, eh, mas maganda. Uh, we will be using the less than uh, cumulative frequency column in the table wherein you start with the lowest or the uh, lowest value first or lowest class before you 
yung ano, hindi yung greater than. Okay. Identify the median class by locating the computed mid middle rank value in the table. And determine the values of LB less than CF. Inote na natin yan. Less than CF. Frequency and I and N. So, then apply the given median formula. So, ayan. We have here this uh, frequency distribution table for uh, that mean. We need to compute for the median. Of ages 50, uh, median of the ages of 50 people taking travel tours. So as you can see here, okay, bayan. So we need to get uh, our median, our, our median using this table. So we're in. Let's first do the first step. We need to identify the median rank and to do that, or the med median class. So to do that, we can all actually use this formula. So, ang gagawin lang natin, we just take the n. So, n is 50. So, 50 divided by 2. Okay? So, that is 25. What we need to do next is identify the median class. Para ma-identify ang median class, we need to construct the less than CF. So, starting from 18 to 36, we have their 3. 3 plus 5, that will be 8. 8 plus 9, that will be 17. 17 plus 14, that will be 31. If I have here 31 plus 11, that will be 42. 42 plus 6, that will be 48. 48 plus 2, that will be 50. Now, to identify the median class, what I need to do here is consider that uh, median rank 25 and I need to uh, look for the great, less than CF that is uh, immediately greater than 25. Okay? So for the median class, I need less than CF that is immediately greater than 25. So as you can see here, hanapin lang natin kung alin yung mas malaki sa 25. So, ang mas malaki sa 25 dito ay 31. Okay? So, kung makuha nyo mismo kung meron man dito, pwede dyan equal. Pag nakuha nyo mismo may 25 dito or nakasaktohan nyo yung median rank ay kasama sa CF, yung class na yun yung, yung titignan nyo. But in any case, uh, 45 to 53 will be our median class. Our median class is... 45 to 53. Okay. So, the, the frequency of median class will be, tingin nyo lang yan, 14. Then, we also need the CF before the median class. So, uh, this is our median class. So, the less than CF will be 17. Balang, titignan nyo lang doon. Ano yung CF before no median class nyo? Then, we also need to get the lower uh, boundary of the median class. So, ang lower boundary, as you may have remembered, ito ay nasa ones. So, we just need to go down. So, tenths. So, we need to minus 0.5 there. So, LB will be uh, 44.5. So, ano lang po lang natin? Pero na tayong N. Pero na tayong frequency ng median class. Pero na tayong less than CF ng ating, uh, ng ating, tawag nila, ng, ng class before the median class. We also have the lower boundary of our median class. We just need to get the I. So, paano yung I? There are ways on how you can do that. You can count the numbers from 45 to 53. So, that will be 45, uh, 46, 47, up to 53. Or, you can just simply uh, take uh, a lower boundary or two lower boundaries that are uh, consecutive to each other. Let's say we have here 18 and 27. You just need to get the, the difference of those. So, we have 
27 minus 18, that will be 9. Similar can be done using uh, higher limit or upper limits. Let's say I have here consecutive upper limits, 71 and 80. You just get the difference of those. So we have there 80 minus uh, 71, that will be 9. So basically, we, we need... Uh, we have all that we, uh, we need to compute for the median or the group median. So for the median, that is actually equal to lower boundary of the median class plus our n over 2 minus less than cf or uh, the commutative frequency before the median class over frequency, you just need to multiply that to the interval. Okay, so meaning to say we have there... Uh, 44.5 plus our n, which is 50 over uh, 2, minus 17 over 14 multiplied by 9. So, uh, sige, simplify pa natin. So, we have there 44, nope, 44.5 plus uh, we have there 25 minus 17, that would be 8. Uh, 25, 8 divided by 14 times 9. So that will be, compute ko na lang diretso sa calcio. Let me just uh, get my calcio. Forty-four point five plus... 8 divided by 14 times 9. So, I have here, hopefully, tama tayo ng mga pare-paras tayo na nakuha. That will be 49.64. So, median, uh, median age is 49.64 years old. Okay? So that will be our uh, final answer here. Hopefully, na sundan kung paano natin to ginawa. Actually, we have here another example wherein I will ask you to, once I present the example or the problem, try to solve, try to pause the video first, then solve the problem, then let's compare our answers. So here's the video. Ah, no, here's the problem. Let me pause the video so you can answer the problem. Okay. So, first things first, uh, let's first identify the N. So, yun yung isang pinakamagandang way na gawin natin start. So, we have here frequencies natin. I-add lang natin to. So, we have here 3, 11, 16, 16. 20, 23. Diba? Check nga ulit. We have here, 3, 11, 16, 20, 23. Okay? Then, let's uh, get the less than CF starting to, from 1 to 5. So we'll have uh, 1, 3, 11, uh, 16, 20, then 23. So, tama naman na. Then, uh, let's uh, get the median rank. So, median rank value that is uh, 23 divided by 2. So, that will be 11.5. That will be the median rank value. Let's just get the median class that has, uh, that is greater than uh, 11.5 directly. So, hindi pwede natin kunin yung 11 kasi less than yan. So, we will be using this region class. We have there, 16 to 20. Lower boundary of the median class. So, since once ulit ito, we just need to subtract 0. 0.5. So, we'll have there, 15.5. Less than CF of the class before our median class. That will be 11. Our I will be uh, 6 minus 1, that will be 5, okay? 
Then, uh, the median. We just need to compute for the median. So, what we can do now here is we'll have 15.5 plus uh, 23 over 2 minus 11 over... Oh, may kulang. We need the frequency of our median class. Median class is 6, 5. So, it's 5 divided by 5 times 5. Okay? So, upon computation, this will be 0. 0.5. 11.5 minus 11, that will be uh, 0. 0.5, then 5, 5 cancel out, so 0. 0.5, this will be equal to 60. Okay? So, median is 16. Okay. Hopefully, nasundan. So, that is how, uh, or hopefully, pares tayo ng sagot kung magsagot kaya. And uh, that is for uh, the computation of median, whether it is group or ungroup. So, kung may questions kayo, pwede kayo mag-comment down on the video eh, or pwede kayo mag-chat sa akin direct, direct. Okay, so, moving on. Our next uh, measure of central tendency is the mode. Mode is actually just the value in the data set that appears more, most frequently. So, kung alin lang yung mas maraming beses or yung pinakamaraming beses na lumabas dun sa iyong data set, yun yung mode mo. So, a data may contain any mode if none, of the most of the values is most difficult. By most difficult, yung pinaka mataas yung frequency. So uh, basically, when we talk of mode, a mode can be unimodal. Uh, by unimodal, the data set has uh, only one mode. By modal, the data set has two modes. Multimodal, the data set has three or more modes. And at some scenario, uh, a data set may have no modes. So when values in the data set has the same uh, number of frequency. So basically, we just need to look for the values or the observations that has the most uh, frequency. So uh, in here, we have uh, this properties of mode. The mode is found by locating the most uh, frequently occurring value is noted. The mode is the easiest average to compute. Yes. When we talk about ungrouped uh, data. And there can be more than one mode or even no mode in a given data set. And mode is not affected by, by extreme or large values. And lastly, mode can be applied for nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio data. So that is the beauty of the mode. You can use it for nominal data. In any case, uh, here is how we compute for the mode of some interval and ratio data. So, uh, for example, we need to compute for the mode of the following data set. So, we have here this data set. Yeah. What do you think is the mode for this given scenario? For this one, mode is actually 10. Why 10? Because 10 uh, appears three times in the data set, meaning to say it has the highest frequency in this data set, making 10 our mode. How about this one? Oh, so this is not a range. <laughs> okay, so what we can do here uh, to better view it, uh, we can actually use a uh, stem in leaf plot. <laughs> Pero magugulo lang ulit yan. So, but, uh, we, what we can do here is we arrange the data set. So we have here 18. It's our lowest value. Then we have 19. May 19 pa po po dyan? Wala na. Then 20. I have here 120. 2, 3, 
four, four in a drink. One, two, three, four. Then next, do we have 21? No. We have 22. So there's one. We have other 22s? No. Oh, we have 21 there. So we have 121 and 122. Then do we have 23? No. 24. 25. So we have 25. 26. 25. Then we have another 25. Tama ba? Ayun, meron pa isa. So we have there 25. Then we have 26. Do we have other 26? No. Do we have 27? 28. We have two 29s. And we have one 30. All right. So, what is the mode? We just arrange the data. But what is the mode? Some of you may say that the mode is equal to 20. That is not correct. And some of you may say that the mode is equal to 25. That is actually not correct. Also, so what is the mode? Mode, the modes are actually 20 and 25. So in this case, we have here a bimodal uh, data set. Why by modal? Because we have uh, two values of the mode. We're in the, our modes will be uh, 20 and 25. So how about this one? So again, we need to arrange. So the lowest value I saw was 45. So we have here 45. Do we have other 45? So we have here another 45. 46. So we have 46, 46, 246. Then 47, we have 247, I think. 47, 47. Then we have 50. We have 48. We have 48, 248. 50, 49, wala ako, 50. We have two fifties, and lastly, we have two fifties. Okay, so please, uh, for this one, determine the mode. Uh, you may pause the video. Okay, so I'm some of you may say that this is actually a multimodal uh, data array, wherein our, your modes will be forty-five. 46, 47, 48, 50, and 51. But that is incorrect. So for this one, actually, there will be no mode. Why? Because kung titignan natin, lahat sila ay pare-parehas na tigda dalawa, which means that there are no values in this data array that appears more frequently. Pare-parehas silang dalawa. Pare-parehas silang dalawa. Walang mas marami. Meaning to say, this data array has no mode. Okay? So that is how you look into uh, the computations of mode. Wherein, uh, by computations, this is actually mere identification of modes. But uh, in the same time, as you can see here, we have here cases wherein we have a mode which is equal to uh, 10 and we have uh, <clears throat> a mode that is bimodal or data array that is bimodal with modes 20 and 25 and a scenario where there is no mode in a certain data set. Uh, sadly, I haven't included the computation of a uh, group group data for the mode. Maybe we'll just uh, go back into it after we, uh, we finish this discussion. 
But basically, for now, uh, we have here uh, our mid range, wherein our mid range is the average of the lowest and the highest value of the data set. So that is just the mid range. So you just need to get the x lowest and the x highest, then divide it by 2. Much like a uh, range, wherein you just divide the range by 2. Okay? So by mid range, this kaya siya tinawag na mid range, kasi it is the middle of the range. So mid range is the easiest to compute a measure of central tendency. Mid range give the midpoint uh, of the data set. Midpoint, kung maalala nyo, if you have uh, a line segment, yun yung nasa pinakagitna. Uh, Mid-range is unique. The only downside uh, of mid-range is it is affected by extreme uh, or extremely small or large values. So, maybe parang medyo erroneous yung magiging computation nyo kapag meron kayo uh, outliers by outliers, yung mga sobrang layo ng values. For example, you, uh, most of your measurements ranges from uh, 5 to 15. Tapos bigla ka nagkaroon ng measurements which is 99. Ang laki nung magiging effect ng 99 dun sa computation mo ng mid-range. Kasi kung isipin nyo, alam ba, you have a data array that has 5, 5, 8, uh, 6, uh, 7, 10, 14, then meron kang 99. If you are to compute for the mid-range, you will be dealing with this 5 and 99. And uh, by that, mid-range will be equal to your lowest value, which is 5 and plus 99. You divide it by 2, you will have 104. 104 divided by 2 will, will be 52. Imagine that. Sobrang layo ng 52 sa 5, sa 5, sa 8, sa 6, sa 7, sa 10, sa 14. So, yun yung magiging issue nyo kapag mid-range or nalang. In any case, mid-range can be applied for interval and, and ratio measurement. It will not work for ordinal and uh, nominal uh, level of measurement. So, we have here the same example that we use uh, for the entire discussion regarding uh, measure of central tendency. So we have here the ages of nine middle management employees of a certain company. So for the mid-range, <laughs> for the mid-range, uh, you just need to get the X lowest and X highest. Then uh, you need to use this formula. So we have there 45 plus 59. Divided by 2, you have 104. Uh, divided by 2, so your mid-range will be 52. So, the mid-range mid age is 52. Okay, so that is mid-range. And uh, these are the effects of changing the units on the mean and the median. Uh, ano ba nangyayari dito? In some... Uh, some scenarios kasi class, magkakaroon tayo ng adjustments sa data natin wherein uh, it may be due to the computation or gawa ng maling conversion. So, uh, if you are to apply all of these alterations to all of your observation, to each observation, ganito yung magiging effect niya. So, for the mean, if you, uh, if you add a certain value to all of your mean, ang mangyayari lang all of your observation, Ang mangyayari lang, dun sa mean mo, you just need to add kung ano man yung in mo dun sa iyong mga observations. For example, for your all of your observation, let's say x1 to xn, you need to add 5 to all of those uh, observations. Then, uh, may na-compute ka na, na originally na, ano, na mean, which is say 25. Hindi mo na kailangan i-recompute yun. Basically, you will be having your adjusted mean wherein, alam ba, yun nga, sinabi sa x2, nag-add ka ulit ng 5, sa x3, nag-add ka ulit ng 5, and so on and so forth. Ganun yung ginawa mo sa lahat ng observations. And your original mean is 25. Your adjusted mean, adjust, okay, na, add, add, will be just 25 plus 5. 5 because nag-add ka ng 5 na yan. So, 
your new mean will be 30. Same with median. Same scenario with median. Uh, if you add a certain value to, ano, halimbawa, uh, your computed median originally is 24, then same scenario, you need you added 5 to all of the observation, your adjusted median will be just 24 plus 5, wherein you will have 29. Okay? The same concept if you are to multiply naman. If you are to uh, convert. For example, uh, you used uh, meters instead of uh, centimeters. So, centimeters ang kailangan mo, meters yung ginamit mo yung magamit mong measurements. So, halimbawa, yung mga measurements mo, kailangan mong mag-multiply ngayon ng 100 dun sa meters mo. So, same with uh, x2. Multiply ka ulit ng 100 hanggang umabot ka ron sa kung ano man yung xn mo or yung last observation mo. But, for that, hindi mo na kailangan i-recompute yun kung meron ka ng initial na measurement. Say, your initial uh, mean for those measurement is, say, 5. And you have a median which is 4.5. Hindi mo na kailangang mag-adjust or mag, uh, hindi mo na kailangang mag-ulit ng measurement. But, ang gagawin mo na lang kung para dun sa adjusted mo, you just need to multiply that uh, 5. Kung ano man yung multiply mo sa bawat values mo. So, that's 100. So, meaning to say, your new mean will be 500. And for the median, same concept. So, you have 4.5 times 100 is equal to 450. So, that will be your uh, adjusted mean and adjusted median when you have uh, when you have some adjustment regarding your measurements or your observation. Okay, so that will be all for now. Uh, you may expect an, an activity on our next class or, uh, or our next uh, scheduled class. So in that, I will be ending the lecture, lecture here on our, uh, on our measures of central tendency we're in today for this part or for this part of the discussion regarding uh, central measures of central tendency we have we already compute median or we already discussed median wherein we had a uh, discussion regarding the computation of ungrouped data and uh, computation of median for group data we also discussed uh, modes wherein we have modes that are uh, unimodal, bimodal, multimodal, or uh, data array with no mode. We also uh, discussed mid-range and also the effects of changing the values of, obs of observation to mean and median. In that, I will be ending that discussion here. So thank you and have a great day.